Drought leaves its mark for 1933. Dust storms in clouds huge enough to blacken the noonday sky bury farms across Texas and the Great Plains. These choking bellows of dust travel across the country, reaching as far as the East Coast and striking such metropolises as New York City and Washington, D.C. Lasting for weeks, the storms leave behind destruction, desolation, and pestilence. Thousands of families are forced to leave their farms and travel to other areas seeking work. The financial ruin resulting from the catastrophe leads to widespread hunger and poverty. But in a country still reeling from the stock market crash of October 24, 1929, American cities and towns struggle in vain to help the thousands in need. Millions of Americans face a grim and uncertain future. Soup kitchens and bread lines become a commonplace as the flapper-filled speakeasies of the 1920s. The jobless become the homeless, and the nation clamors for change. The 1932 presidential campaign brings with it mounting demand to end the days of prohibition. Immediately after one of the largest landslide victories in U.S. history, the 32nd president-elect of the United States, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, implements the Beer Permit Act and enforcement of the 21st Amendment, which repeals the nationwide prohibition on alcohol. Seen here speaking to the nation, President Roosevelt calls for the creation of programs designed to produce relief, recovery, and reform. Within his first year, he has begun enforcing these policies through a series of executive orders and federal policies. His New Deal to the nation establishes a Social Security Act and federal programs to protect unions and aid tenant farmers and migrant workers throughout the country. Social Security is the President's theme as, in Washington, he discusses the outlook of the individual. The millions of today want and have a right to the same security that their forefathers sought in this nation. The assurance that with health and the willingness to work, they will find a place for themselves in the social and economic system of the time. Because it has become increasingly difficult for individuals to build their own security single-handed, government must now step in and help them lay the foundation stones just as government in the past has helped lay the foundation of business and industry. We must face the fact that in this country we have a rich man's security and a poor man's security, and that the government owes equal obligations to both. But national security is not a half-and-half half measure. It is all or none. Puerto Rico, outpost of American democracy. For long centuries, the history of Puerto Rico has been a fair page, marred only by the forays of pirates who swarmed the West Indies waters. Its strategic position in an unsettled world now gives the island new and vital importance, the realization of which is two million peace-loving people cooperating patriotically to forestall the spread of totalitarian tyranny from the shores of the Americas. If you are looking for a vacation paradise, go south to Puerto Rico, hub of the Blue Caribbean. Puerto Rico was ceded to the United States as a result of the Spanish-American War. Today, a new era. Behind old, massive ramparts, modern structures symbolize Puerto Rico's progress after 35 years under the American flag. This island was discovered in 1493 by Christopher Columbus, to whose memory this monument in Aguadilla is consecrated. Ruled by Spain until 1898, People by descendants of Spanish settlers. Hundred-year-old communities existed when the pilgrims landed on Plymouth Rock. In 1917, Congress declared all Puerto Ricans to be United States citizens. Puerto Rico today is a fully-packed kaleidoscope of European color. Strange slices of tropical drama and a brisk modernity that has come under the influence of the stars and stripes. Large sugarcane interests occupy the fertile coastal plain and furnish seasonal employment to workers in the cane fields. Thus, most of the farming population has been driven to the hills. Here, the principal crops are coffee and tobacco, yams, yatia, and a large variety of vegetables and fruits are grown for domestic consumption. 
The economic structure of Puerto Rico rests on a highly specialized agricultural system based on external trade relations. Sugarcane is king, the principal source of the nation's income. Witness Don Juan Paz Ruiz. By means of hard work, intelligent management, and the help of his family, he manages to earn a living in the fields and, on his piece of land, grow the food needed for his household. The Puerto Rican farmer manifests independence, thrift, and a courage worthy of the highest praise. Yes, nearly two million people living on an island 100 miles long by 40 miles wide, and most of these inhabitants depend on sugarcane for their life. But the increase in the price of sugar on the world markets, as well as the investment of capital, has made Puerto Rico into one of the principal producers of sugar internationally. In 1930, 49% of all exports were agricultural products. Of these, 90% was sugar. 300,000 farm families live here, working the good earth and working it hard to get from their tiny farms the food necessary for subsistence. With less than one acre of arable land per person in the country, all must work, men, women, boys, girls, many with no implement but a sickle or a pointed stick. No moving, no auto, no radio, no eight-hour day, but supreme satisfaction in the knowledge of work well done. The people of Puerto Rico live in a countryside of extraordinary beauty, a land of blue skies and white surf, of majestic green mountains and magnificent sunsets, a land that yields a modest livelihood to people who work hard enough to win it. Through this spirit of helpful service and the determination to build a more bountiful future, better farmers are improving farming, better housewives are improving living, better children are improving life itself. And when the hours of toil are brought to a close and the sun goes down beyond the uncertain sea, full of heart and all his hope and bound to the will to work for a fuller life in rural Puerto Rico, a rampart of American democracy in a country favored by God.